Okay, so let's just go through a couple of examples from the very beginning of chapter one. I'm on page four, section 1.2, creating objects. Um, it says start BlueJay and open the example named Shapes. So we're going to have to go to the project menu and say open project. You have to navigate to wherever you happen to put your projects folder after you copied it off the CD. And go into chapter one and we want to open the Shapes project. Okay, so what we have here is um, four different types of classes. We have canvas, circle, square, and triangle. And the book tells us to right click on the circle class and select new circle. This is going to give us a new instance of the circle class, a new circle object. And the book tells us let's just allow the default name of the instance, the name that the, that the um, BlueJay tool decides to give it. So it says it wants to call this first um, circle object circle one. Now notice that the class is called circle with a capital C and the, this particular instance of the class is called circle with a lowercase c. That's just a convention that programmers use to make it easier for other programmers to read their code. The computer doesn't really care at all. But if we all use capital letters to refer to the actual class and lowercase letters to re refer to the um, instances in the class, then it makes it a lot easier. Um, <coughs> we can make another circle by right clicking again and saying new circle. This one, it needs to have a different name from the first instance because we have to be able to distinguish them. Um, this one, it's going to default to circle two, sure. And if we wanted to, we could make a new instance of a square. So let's right click on this and say new square. Now, notice it's naming this instance square one. We could have called it elephant. We could have called it giraffe. We could even call it circle three. But all of those are pretty confusing names and the name square one is a pretty reasonable name for, for this instance of the object right now. So we'll stick with square one. Okay. Now, we can also call methods on individual objects. So for example, if I look at the circle one instance, um, I can right click and I can say make visible. It turns out that the circle object isn't visible until you tell it to make it visible and up pops a little window that shows me my circle. Oh, apparently it's a blue circle. And there's other methods that we can use. For example, if I single right click again and say move right, that makes the um, circle move right on the canvas. I can say move down, it moves down. Now, if you want to, the book also suggests you, oops, I don't want to do something to the um, class, I want to do it to the object. So let's right click again here on circle one. I could make it invisible. Oh, now you can't see it. I can make it visible. Notice that I could also make circle two visible at this point. Oops, I double clicked with the right mouse button by mistake and that brings this up. Unfortunately, this seems to be very sensitive. All right, so let's right click one time and make visible circle two now and check it out. There's circle two, there's circle one. They're pretty darn close together. Let's make circle two invisible for now so it doesn't bug us. But we do have two different circles. They're both instances of the circle class. Okay, so we've called a couple of methods. If you look on page six, the book starts talking about methods that actually have parameters. For example, if I right click on the circle one object again, and I say move horizontal, you'll notice this seems to be waiting for some kind of input. That input is my parameter. It turns out that the information up here tells me that my parameter is an integer, a whole number, um, and represents the distance. So let's say I want to move horizontal by, I don't know, 50 pixels, and say OK. And there it goes, it moved over. So I guess if I right click on this, oops, I double clicked, sorry. If I right click gently on this again and say move horizontal and I say 150, 150 pixels, ooh, it jumped pretty far. 
And now, if I make Circle 2 visible, darn that double click, there we go. Now we can see there's Circle 2, there's Circle 1. Of course, it would be easier if they were different colors. So why don't we make Circle 2 a different color? Let's right click on this. Ah, oh, sorry. Right click once, not twice, very slowly. There we go. And we'll say change color. Now, the parameter for change color, it says, is a string. So we have to use double quotes. So I'll do double quote red for red, double quote. Say OK. So now check it out. Circle 2 is a red object that happens to be located here. Circle 1 is a blue object that's located there. And let's just take a look at square 1. Let's make that visible. Ah, sorry. Right click and make visible. Ooh. And there's square one. I guess squares are red by default. Um, I wonder if we could make it yellow. Let's give it a shot. Let's right click. Let's say change color. And we'll do quote, yellow quote. Bingo. It's yellow. You can't really see it very well, but it's yellow. Maybe we'll make it green. Hang on. Right click. We'll change the color of the square object. Make sure you use quotes, green, there we go. So we've got two instances of the circle class. We've got one instance of the square class, and they're located in different places. Um, they have some different properties about them. Okay, good enough.